Hello and welcome. In this episode, we're going to be adding a timer to our platformer here so that the player can try to get the best time possible for each level. So let's jump right in. The first thing we're going to do is actually a suggestion from the comments. We're going to come in here into the player script and there's actually a function that allows the camera to stop smoothing and move exactly to the location that it's at without having to skip a physics frame or anything like that. And it's called camera. Well, the function is called reset smoothing, but we're going to call camera reset smoothing. And then we don't need any of these lines. And that should work. Let's save and try it out. Okay, so we're going to get the energy cells and then go to the next level. And there we go. Worked perfectly. Awesome. So thanks a lot for that suggestion. I didn't know about this function, so it's awesome to learn about it. And it was a really easy fix. Okay, next we want to create a stopwatch. And this thing is just going to count up in seconds and minutes. And it's going to be pretty simple to make. We're just going to create a new scene. It's going to be a regular node. And we're going to call it stopwatch. And we're going to add a script to it. Also called stopwatch, but we want to save it in the scripts folder. And I'm going to change it to lowercase. Okay, everything else looks good. Create. And let's go ahead and save the scene. Stopwatch is fine. Uh, actually, yeah, just right there is fine. Save. Okay, and before we forget, we're also going to add the stopwatch scene over to the gameplay scene. So, stopwatch. And I'm just going to move it up a little bit for organization. And then back in the stopwatch scene, we're going to go into the stopwatch node and to groups, and we're going to add a stopwatch group. And this will be so we can find it from the UI and whoever else needs it. So we'll just add that there. Next, we go into the stopwatch script. We want to call it class name stopwatch. And it's going to be a pretty simple script. We need a couple of things. We need something that counts up in time. We're just going to call it time initiated at 0.0. .0. And we're also going to set up a stopped variable. This will be for like if there's pausing involved or anything like that in between levels, that sort of thing. We'll start it as false. Okay, next what we want to do is we want to count up on the time variable. So we're going to do that in the process function. And we're just going to say if, oops, if stopped, then we just return out of here. We don't want to run this, but if it's not stopped, then we'll say time plus equals delta. And then we want a function to reset the timer when we want to zero it out in between levels. So time equals 0.0, .0 again. And we're going to add a little bit more to this script in a little while, but for now that's pretty good. Next we want to come to the HUD scene and we're going to be adding a label to display the stopwatch. So we're going to come up to HUD and have it selected and then add a new child and it'll be a label. And let's center it on the top of the screen. Right there is good. And we'll call it stopwatch label. And go to the inspector and we want to add our label settings that we have. Let's quick load them. There we go. And I'm just going to put in some placeholder text just so that we get some idea of what it's going to look like when there's actually like a timer on it. And just a couple of more things here. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to make it so that the horizontal alignment is, yeah, actually left is good. And vertical alignment in center. That's what we want. That way if we do that, it'll stay centered there. And I'm just going to align it right there because I want the this will be minutes, seconds, and milliseconds, and I want the seconds to kind of be centered on the screen. So we'll just do that. And we're going to open up the HUD script next, and we want access to that label. So we'll say export bar stopwatch label. 
and this will be of type label. We also want a variable for the stopwatch, which I'm just going to call stopwatch. And it'll be of type stopwatch. There we go. And next we're going to add a couple of functions. We're going to add the ready function, which is where we will be getting a reference to the stopwatch using get tree. First node in group and the group stopwatch. We're also going to need a, oops, we're going to need a process function. And here we're going to call um, another function that we're about to make here. We'll call the update stopwatch label function. And this is going to get access to the label and the text. And right now we don't actually have a text that we want to put in. We're about to make that over in the stopwatch script. But for now, we can leave that like that. And we can just call this during the process function. And that should do it for the HUD script for now. Okay, back on the stopwatch script, I'm actually just gonna copy paste some of my other code here. And that's just so I can explain it rather than type it all out. So this is gonna be a function that takes the time from the stopwatch and turns it into a string. That's why we're returning a string here and the return call is done right there. So what's going on here is you're taking the time, which is going to be some sort of float that's being counted up using Delta and we're turning it into milliseconds, seconds, minutes, and then we're formatting it like a string. So to give a very brief explanation of what this is doing, fmod is a mathematical function that returns a floating point remainder of the two numbers. In the example, if you pass in five, uh, sorry, seven and 5.5, the remainder between them will be 1.5. For our purposes, since time is in seconds, you can sort of think of the second number as a sort of cap and has decimal places that are milliseconds, what this is doing is it's capping the milliseconds at one, in other words, 1000 milliseconds, and then multiplying it by a thousand to give us the number that we want for the format that we're trying to make. For seconds, it's capping the seconds at 60. So once seconds hits 59, it'll go back down to zero and keep counting up again. And for minutes, we're not capping it at all. Instead, we're just dividing it by 60 because there are 60 seconds in a minute. So that's more or less what these three lines are doing. The next set of lines are really just formatting a string. I have basically put these lines together following the format string documentation on the Godot website. There's a ton here and it's kind of complicated, so I'll link it down to the description so you can read it. But for example, the D that I'm using there is this one here where it's using a decimal integral. And then the zero there makes it so that you've got leading zeros for padding instead of white spaces, which is good for like a clock. Further down, it also shows you how to hand in an array of values, which is what we're doing. So yeah, these two lines are just formatting it to look like a clock. I can put in a little comment here. It says formatting time to look like this. And it's basically this. And that's all these two lines are doing. Oh, actually it's three zeros at the millisecond. And then returning the string. Okay, so now coming back to the HUD script, what we want to do is for the stopwatch label text, we actually want to call that method. So we'll do stopwatch dot time to string, which will return that string. And now we should be good to go. We just need to save and we need to go into the HUD and plug in the label that we made right there. And now we should be ready to test this out. So let's run. And okay, there it is. It's working. The text is getting a little in the way here. I think if we stretch the window, it'll be okay. There we go. So you can see this is seconds. It's counting up. This is milliseconds. It's got three decimal places. This has two. I'm going to wait for this to get to 50 seconds or so, and then we can see what happens when it gets to 60. Okay. So we're almost there. So it should hit 59 and then go back down to zero and count up in the minutes. There we go, it's all working. I do wanna move this text down a bit so it doesn't get in the way when the window is small. And the other current issue is that it's not resetting the timer in between levels. So we need to make sure we do that. Okay, so first let's move this stuff down a little bit because that's gonna be really easy. I'm just gonna move it down so that it doesn't get in the way of the timer here, even on the smaller screen. It's not gonna be super nice, but that's okay. I'm actually thinking about redoing the HUD here pretty soon. 
So because I'm thinking of redoing it, I don't want to spend too much time fixing this now. This should hopefully fix it. Let's just go ahead and save and then try it out and see if they did the trick. There we go, that's better. It's not super pretty, but like I said, I think we'll be redoing that really soon here. And now we just need to have the time reset when we go through that portal. And the way I wanna reset the time is we're actually gonna use the game manager script and we're gonna add a signal here. So we'll have a signal for area started. There we go. And the area started signal will get emitted when we load a new area at the very end. That should do it. And now what we wanna do is we wanna go into the stopwatch and we wanna check the ready function or we wanna add a ready function. And in the ready function, we want the game manager dot area started dot connect. And we wanna connect it to the reset function that we created here. And that should work. Let's try it out. Okay, so we need to collect the energy cells and then see if the timer resets when we go through the portal. And sure enough, it works. Fantastic. And I think that's more or less going to do it for this episode. I'm really happy with this timer. Obviously, there's still some work to do. I think normally with a game that has a timer, you would want something like a status screen at the end of the level to tell you what your final time was. You could also do something where you're saving the times for each individual level so the player can try to improve their times. But because I want to redo the HUD system and because we don't have a saving and loading system yet, I'm just going to skip that stuff for now. So we'll have to loop back eventually and improve the timer and add those elements. But I wanted to get it done so that we had the infrastructure here for it. And it seems to be working well. So I want to give a special thanks to all of the Patreons who support me on this channel. I really appreciate your support. If you want to become a Patreon or you want to support me through coffee, the links are down in the description. If you like the video, hit the like button. That helps me out a lot too. And you can subscribe if you want to keep seeing more of the series. Of course, if you've got suggestions for the series or questions or anything, leave it down in the comments. And thanks so much for watching.